Today, we're looking at a Westinghouse model CW40 T8GW. This 40 inch TV has sound, but no picture. Here we have a TV. It has sound, but no picture. And we're gonna to try to repair it. Okay, the first challenge is getting the back off. You lay the TV down on a nice secure area. I like to put cardboard down so you don't damage anything. We, you don't want to have a bunch of scratches on there. And then you got to remove a whole bunch of screws, every single screw you see. And here's my trick. I got a magnet here. And you magnetize the screwdriver. And that way the screws don't get lost so easily. And uh, just be really, really careful and don't break anything. Take your time. And uh, we'll see how this thing goes. That came off pretty easily. I'd remove the stand and uh, a bunch of screws. And I, I always have like a little jar to keep all the screws in. It really comes in handy. So anyway, uh, we'll take a look here. We can kind of see the power cord comes in and goes to the power supply unit. And that's the first place we're gonna look because there's a, a, a high voltage power supply that has to light the CFL backlighting and uh, then maybe the CFL backlights themselves. So we'll take a look in here and see if we can see anything wrong. High voltage, caution. Ooh, I think we're close. So I think let's take a look here on the side here. Okay, so this is, this is the high voltage circuit for all the CFLs. Kind of see the extensive stuff and it's fed from this cable. We follow that along, okay, that cable comes right up here. And the connector, you can see it says, uh, all these top wires are ground, and all these bottom wires are plus 24 volts. So, first thing we do is we, we want to make sure that we have plus 24 volts here. And uh, if we do have 24 volts here, then our problem is somewhere in here. And, uh, you know, there's no obvious uh, thing like a, a burnt up component here. So, if... Uh, Anyway, uh, let's start our basic diagnostics and make sure that we've got our, our plus 24 volts coming into this thing. So, here we go. Here's a new data point here. You know, I put my ears by the inverters and I could hear humming. And when I put my uh, test lead in the high voltage position, I could see an arc coming from the inverters. So the inverters are on. And look at these lights. I mean, the backlight is on. But we look underneath here and you can kind of actually, with the lights off, you can see there's a faint glow but there's no video. So this tells us that the CFL, or actually CCFL inverters are working, the inverters are on, and we have something wrong in our video processing board, which is bad news. Uh, let me take a look at this a little further. Now here's another method you can use to try to find out on a TV with no picture, whether it's the backlight is the issue, or whether it's the video encoder chip or something the video circuit's a problem, is use a flashlight. So I've got me a, a nice flashlight right here. And so what we do is with video running, you look up in here with the flashlight and see if you can see any part of an actual picture. Here you notice that it's just all black. We don't see anything. But uh, of course we don't have any video here. We, uh, but uh, if it was just the backlight, you'd still be able to see the the actual video playing there with a flashlight. So that's that's one of the ways to, to, to do it. See where all the video inputs are in here. And we got, got this board here that processes all the inputs and everything. And uh, I'm sure uh, this huge chip down here does a heck of a lot to process video and audio. And we have audio and the audio is working. And you can see this big cable or this cable full these little wires going up over here and there's a there's a metal cover over this so I took the metal cover off and then you can kind of see the the two flat cables in the top that go right to the LEDs so the problem's either somewhere in here or somewhere in here uh, the person who had this TV said it was working just fine and then boom lost video so uh, there, there's nothing obviously wrong and uh, let me just do a few more basic troubleshooting techniques here. As initial troubleshooting, I checked all these voltages on connector 2 to verify that there's not something going on in the power supply. Okay, well, this is the, on the back, 
there's a sticker that had uh, that number on there and this number was checked. So I guess it's called a TCON board and I don't know, $14, tell you what, it's a 50-50 chance that this is the one here and we'll give it a try and I'll let you know. Maybe I'll get lucky, maybe I, I lost uh, $15. It's a 50-50 chance that's the TCON board. Here's the main board and here's somebody selling this is a, you can see that it looks exactly the same, it's the same model number. Here's somebody selling it for $48. This is just the first place I looked. But uh, anyway, 50-50 chance. I'm spending uh, $14 now and maybe I'll be spending uh, $48 later. Okay, I think I'm on the right track of the TCON board. I already ordered the new TCON board on a guess, but now let's see how to really troubleshoot it. And the first thing to notice, so you can see how the, the first two wires are the red wires, and if you look, they have 12 volts on them. So that's the 12 volts that's supposed to power this thing, and then there's some, uh, like there's a, a voltage regulator here, and it says it's got like nothing on it, and I'm seeing like point 0.18 volts, kind of a low voltage, 0.18 volts. Look on this inductor, ooh, 0.18 volts. Now put it in this inductor, same thing. This inductor, 0.13 volts, 0.13 volts, and there's a, 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 a diode, I got the same thing, 0.13 volts. There's a big diode here. Got nothing that side and well, well anyway, is what I'm getting at is there's something really, really bad here. There's a, a power supply circuit, you know, and uh, they got these two inductors and whatever, they're all part of the power supply circuit, and this thing's definitely dead. So I think I picked the right component on my lucky guess, but uh, anyway, there there should be you know, lower voltages need to operate these chips, typically something like, you know, 3.3 .3 or 5 volts, uh, maybe a little lower, but uh, yeah, the, 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 this is definitely bad here. And let's get ready for some big success when, when the new TCON board shows up in the mail. I just wanted to point out, right there, that white component is a fuse. You know, I, I've been getting on YouTube and reading up on other people troubleshooting these things. And, uh, oops. Yeah, the, that uh, white component right there is a fuse, and uh, one side of it has 12 volts on it, and the other side of it has like a, about 0.18 uh, volts on it. So uh, the fuse is blown, and so uh, yeah, the, uh, de definitely a, a bad TCON board, and uh, who knows, uh, maybe one of the diodes, one of the, the regulators, something in there is bad. Uh, when I was younger, I used to go through there and fix these things on a component level, but uh, man, the components are way too small nowadays. And buying a new TCON board for $14 sure sounds a heck of a lot e easier than uh, trying to uh, troubleshoot this thing on a component basis. Our new TCON board showed up in the mail, and now we have to remove the old one. So we click on the little. There we go. There's some little connectors here. You can kind of see I, I'm. You have to squeeze some of the countries on the side. I want to get a better angle from the side to show that comes up there. This metal, see this black piece of plastic there? It came right up. So, but you have to go along for your, th your fingernail and get it loose on one side, get it loose on the other side, then it flips up, and then this cable comes right out. Okay, I got the this side in there. It's all about finesse. You got to take your time. Get this thing in here. All about finesse, taking your time. And of course, now the camera's on here, I'm going to rush. It's not going to go in. And like one side's in, but this other side, I can tell, is not quite in all the way. Let me just try getting the other side in first. Okay, okay, now they're both in. We pop this thing down, and it's all in. But you gotta take your time and no rush. Okay, let me tell you what's going on. I put a new TCON board in here, fired it up, 
and the same thing happened. I lost all my voltage. The fuse kind of blew. And uh, I noticed uh, I did some diagnostic, and I unplugged this side here. And there's a bit of resistance across there, and the voltage came up. And when I put a short across the fuse, the, the, the left side of the LCD panel started to change color. It went black. At least something happened to it. And uh, if I plug in this other side there, it just shorts everything out. Okay, I removed the, the screws that were holding the front bezel on. And I got underneath here and got a couple of the screws off on this metal panel. So now you can kind of see how there's uh, the connections to the actual panel here. There's a circuit board along here. Connection, like connection here, connection there, connection there, connection there. And then, see that's for the left side. We know the left side's good. We know there's some sort of a short on the right side here. So um, you got a connection here, connection here, connection here, connection here. And uh, boy, unless I see something obvious here, we might not be able to go any further. But anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna look in here and see if I can see anything obvious. You know, like maybe and test to see if there's any like shorty capacitor or something weird like that. I don't know, but. Uh, uh, otherwise, the problems inside the, the LCD panel itself, we're not going to be able to get too far on it. Okay, let me tell you what I found here so far. So there's three big capacitors. There's kind of a big big one right, 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 right there. Oops, let's get on camera. Big one right there. A big one right here. And a big one right there. And if I measure across them, there's a of short. I'm getting around 4.7 ohms. Now on this end I seem to get 4.7 and it seems to settle pretty quickly and this one goes to 4.7, takes a little longer to settle and this one kind of settles to 4.8. So if I had to guess that, you know, I'm hoping, see is what I'm really hoping is one of these capacitors is shorter. That's all I got left. Otherwise it's an internal short inside there. But the only way to know is to take off uh, these two, capa two th three capacitors. And by the way, the, the circuit board on the other side has the same kind of capacitors here. And these things measure infinite. So there's definitely some sort of short on this side here. And uh, now we just got to hope it's a shorter capacitor. Boy, if it's not a shorter capacitor, uh, time to throw this thing away. Okay, you can kind of see where the capacitor was, and I took it off. And basically, I uh, put a little solder wick and hit, heat it on the top and the bottom, get excess solder, and then I just heated up the top until the whole thing was hot enough to where it came off. And I took those three capacitors off, and no bueno, but I looked, and there's this capacitor. Let's, let's get it on camera. See that one right there? That big one that's laying horizontal? That one has a dead short across it. A lot lower ohms. The other ones are like 4.8. This one's like about half that. So that one's a dead short. This is my last chance. It's my last chance, and I kind of saved these two bad boys. I lost one of them, but I, I, I'll put those back because uh, they, they're good. Well, success, everybody. C17 was the one. I took C17 out, and now uh, there's no short circuit on any of the rest of them. I'll try to replace those. Uh, other two capacitors that I have and we'll put everything back together again and see if we can get this thing working. Okay, here we go. We got a, a pitcher now. And I thought I would give you some of the voltages on the the, uh, the, T, or the T con board. I want you to notice that I put a, a jumper across the fuse because the fuse blew and I don't want to buy a, a, another T con board so I just jumpered the fuse. Okay, let me just show you some of the voltages on here. Now that we got this thing jumpered, of course, we have, we have the, the fuse right here. And here we got 12 volts. And of course, both sides has 12 volts. I got it jumpered. And then the output of that goes to this inductor. Oops, here we go. Got the 12 volts here. 12 volts there. And uh, anyway, uh, 
we, we, now uh, that comes down, there's also a 3.3 volt regulator. I'm sure that's this regulator over here. Took a look on, on the first pin of it. We got here 3.44 volts. What's on the center pin? Zero. And 1.22 over here. So that goes to this inductor. So we got 3.16. Oops, come on, get in there. Okay, well, 3.44. And three, well, 3.16 again. So I guess there's a little bit of current going through that. So th those are the, the main things to look for uh, to make sure that your power supply is up and going on, on the, the TCON board.